Okay, in the last video I did, we did the driver's side uh, rear axle bearing. I'm going to show you how we're going to go in a little more in depth on this one. If you can see up here, you can see the, uh, the transmission and then we've removed the constant velocity joint. It's still on the axle and you can see the axle is kind of propped up over the exhaust system. And we were able to remove the, the, uh, the rotor and uh, we've got the hub exposed and we drove out the uh, the drive hub, which is the you know the short axle, which is still as you can see attached to the constant velocity joint. So we didn't have to take this CV joint loose inside the hub, and we're going to slip that back in when we're done. It's a little trick to that, but um, I have enough room. As you can see, there's plenty of room there. I'm moving that around. We've had enough room to put our little drive. Um, mechanism that we made out of a bolt and a socket. I've had enough room to get that in through the back of the uh, the hub and now what we're going to do is we're going to actually drive the hub out show you how easy this is to do this. So what we have here is we have a bolt that's uh, just basically a long carriage bolt. Um, it is not all thread. It's threaded quite a ways but it's not all thread. You can actually do this and probably even easier if you want to go buy a, a piece of all thread but this is a bolt that I had laying around. You can buy all thread. You can put a nut on the back of the all thread, uh, a washer, a socket, whatever you want. And you can also put a washer on the front of your hub and run the nut all the way up to the hub and tighten it down a little bit. And that gives you a nice tight fit against the hub as far as your homemade slide hammer. What I did was I just put a little bit of a rubber hose. It moves. It's just a heater hose over the end of that over the bolt and that'll kind of keep me from bouncing around keep it somewhat centered it doesn't really take that much to get these things out of here as I hopefully will show you in a, in, uh, in the next segment okay now we've got the homemade slide hammer through you can see the bolts you can see this magnet that we took off of a big woofer we've got the bolt through we've got a couple of washers and a nut on the end of that now our attempt is going to be to get this hub out of the housing Hopefully it'll take three, maybe four wax. Well, let's see what we got here. Try one, two, three. This one might be a little tighter. Okay. See how it's done? Nice and clean. It took us more than three wax, but you know. That's not the point. The point is that we've got it out of there now. We're ready to take off our cover over the, uh, ooh, that doesn't sound good. Uh, we're ready to take off the cover and then we can work on taking the bearing out. Okay. Obviously you can see that the, uh, the flange, the bearing flange is now off. That wasn't what we to do. Here's our bearing exposed. Look at that. That doesn't, uh, that doesn't look good. I don't know, it might be okay, but it seems like there's a lot of slop in there. So now what we're gonna do is go for the backside, and we also have another bolt that we use with a nut on it, and I will tap this out from the backside. Okay. See, I'm sure that the bearing's already partially out. I'm gonna go ahead and get it the rest of the way. What I did with the drive shaft was on the uh, transmission side of it, we lifted that drive shaft up and pushed it up against the bottom of the car towards the bell housing. And uh, that gave me enough clearance to pull the, the stub axle right out of the uh, trailing arm. So, it's no longer in the way. I didn't have to take the stub axle off. Um, the uh, constant velocity dr drive is laying here in one piece and I have plenty of room to work. So, let me get the rest of this bearing out. Got a hole over here. A couple of hits each side. Just 
just about there. Working our way around about every 90 degrees. A couple more ought to do it. We don't, we're just using a simple ball peen, not a two pound or anything like that. So, our bearing is out and it's a one piece. We're going to do a little cleanup work in here now. We'll wash this down with some, um, I'll wipe the, the grease and stuff down with a little bit of acetone or some paint there. Clean that kind of up in there. And then we're going to sand this area lightly with uh, so maybe some uh, wet and dry 400 sandpaper so that we just kind of basically hone it just nothing fancy just any little burrs might be taken off and it'll just clean the surface a little better I wiped it down with a little acetone and a rag we've got some 400 sandpaper here kind of work our way around in there I just want to know that any any kind of rough edges would be gone. There aren't any because when we use the tool here, it's it's actually a lot softer than this material, and we don't really hit against the inside of the hub. We hit against the back of the bearing race on the outer edge. So let's say that's got that. A little more acetone, rag, and we'll clean that up, and we're ready to go back in with the bearing. Be right back with that. Okay, here comes the trick. Here's how to get this bearing in. Now, as you see, on uh, if you go on YouTube and stuff, and you obviously you found my video, but if you go on there and you find other videos and stuff, they'll show you that they're pressing these bearings in with a with a big you know shop press, which the cheapest one you can buy of those is going to cost you a couple hundred bucks and it's a piece of crap. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to have that. It's not necessary. Here's the trick. Now, I've got the bearing somewhere else. And I'm going to go shut the camera off and go grab it real quick and come back out. And I'm going to show you quickly how to do this because you can't really waste a lot of time the way I'm going to do it. It's going to go in. It's going to go fast. But you saw that I took some, just some plain old super white multi-purpose grease. I didn't goop this all up. I took a nice thin um, layer and I covered the inside of that bearing housing. So we've got a little bit of a layer of grease there. I'll be right back with the bearing. Okay, here's the trick. Here's the bearing. Most of these bearings are tapered on one side. I happen to get a set that's tapered pretty much on both sides, so it doesn't really matter which side I use. A little bit of extra grease here. Start that there. Put this bearing in your freezer for a day or more before you intend to do this. Get this thing ice cold and don't waste any time. Line it up, push it, and damn. <laughs> okay, I like it. There we are. Push it, push it, and you're in. And it goes that fast. Actually, that was a little bit gritty and I cut it down a lot easier. But you saw how before, on a lot of places they use a press to do that. I think I have a little bit of grit in my grease here, and that's probably why it was a little bit stiffer. But you saw I basically did the same job with my hands. There goes my compressor. Now, here's the last trick that I can probably show you. You can see that the drive hub is sticking back out here. Now, I told you that we took the CV joint, the drive assembly, out. And, and I did. I had it completely out. I pushed it up against the... Uh, the trunk and, I, and forward towards the uh, bell housing and it gave me enough room to pull this completely out. Now when you go back to put it in, 
put it in before you put the hub on. You'll never get it in any other way. It's just there's not enough room for you. So put it in. It's right. It's right, laying right there on the inside bearing races. Uh, you can put it back in the same way. If you, you have to be careful, but if you put your finger through the hub here or through the bearing and you feel from the back side, you can feel the end of the shaft and you can kind of push up and guide it. And once you get it to start in that bearing, you're pretty well set. So then again, we're going to add a little grease onto our hub. Also, you could have frozen this if you wanted and it'd be even smaller going in. But uh, we're going to put that back on. Okay. Now we have reinstalled the constant velocity axle. Make sure you do that before you put the hub on uh, because you can reach through the bearing and pull your uh, axle through. You find it with your finger and guide it through. Otherwise, it'll, if you put the hub on first, you'll never get that axle in there. So now we've stuck the hub on. We're going to tighten it slowly. Oh, we're going to tighten it the other way. We'll try that the other type and we'll see if that pulls that hub in One button there we are uh, here we go and we're good to go of course the axle's flopping around but no more grinding feeling the bearings back together we'll torque this nut when we're done but basically that's how you do it you've seen the uh, the thing come apart you've gotten it to that point once you get it apart which is basically the reverse for putting it back together. And that's how to do it.